Welcome to today's New England Hymns webinar, Driving Digital Innovation with Data Analytics, Six Stories of Success, presented by Ashley Rogers, Vice President of Healthcare, and Sadish Mugli, Chief Technology Officer, both with Healthcare Triangle. All lines have been muted upon entry today, so please send all your questions via the Q&A feature, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session. As Vice President of Healthcare at Healthcare Triangle, Ashley leads the healthcare division providing sales and delivery leadership, relationship management, and innovative product solutions. She draws on over 15 years of experience delivering innovative technology solutions with a focus on provider organizations. Joining Ashley today is CTO Sadish Mowgli. He drives the overall strategic vision of Healthcare Triangle and is responsible for the product strategies of the next generation applications and solutions for customers in regulated industries such as life sciences, pharma, healthcare, and financial services. Please join me in welcoming Ashley and Sadish today. Thank you, Elise. We so appreciate the opportunity to be with you here in New England Hymns this, uh, this morning and this afternoon here on the East Coast. Um, I appreciate the warm and kind introduction. Um, as Elise mentioned, my name is Ashley Rogers. I work and uh, run our healthcare group here at Healthcare Triangle, where we serve about 100 health systems in the United States and five of the top 10 global pharmaceutical companies. Um, a little bit more personally, I actually reside in Northern California, um, but I'm originally from the East Coast. So it's really a pleasure to be speaking with this group today. Um, so in our conversations, uh, we will be talking through uh, ways um, and exploring why a database approach for digital innovation is key uh, to driving success and, and really sustaining value in healthcare. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the challenges of using data, um, especially unstructured data. And this is a big issue for us across healthcare. And we'll talk about some of the innovative solutions that are coming to bear uh, in the healthcare market to really help solve this sort of long-standing problem of unstructured data. And that's helping to meet patient needs as well as really close gaps in care that have existed as, health, as patients move from health system to health system. And then finally, we're gonna actually look at three different organizations and the approaches they took to charting a path for digital health transformation and really how they informed that with data analytics and uh, some of these data-based approach, approaches. Um, so to state maybe a little bit of the obvious, I think COVID has really shown us that digital innovation is happening and it's happening rapidly. Um, the healthcare industry over the last almost two years has taken a huge leap forward in digital utilization or digital tool utilization, excuse me, uh, as well as um, the ability to provide services in a virtual setting. Obviously, um, one great example of this is telehealth. We're all very familiar with the large uptick in telehealth uh, over the last two years. Uh, certainly in 19, I think the healthcare industry did about 3 million telehealth visits per quarter. By mid-2020, that number was well over 72 million exponential in terms of the change and the, the really the growth of utilization of those tools. And I think what's unique is that the healthcare industry isn't really expecting that to change. In fact, we're anticipating more innovation to be coming our way. Um, Gartner's most recent survey uh, shows that approximately 30% of outpatient care is likely to shift to virtual care by 2020, uh, 2022, I'm sorry. So we're almost there, it is um, October at this point, and we're heading into that 2020 year with 30% moving uh, to that virtual provision of care. Um, I think even equally interesting, nearly one in three healthcare organizations are talking about deploying virtual assistance for patient tri triage by 2023. So just another year out and a good percentage of healthcare systems think that digital tools are really going to be the first entry point for patients coming into their health system, not a person, not a nurse triage line, but rather a virtual assistant providing that type of service. And um, kind of even more shocking, particularly for me, I come from an epic systems uh, and an epic background, the EMR, 
Uh, and really that's where I started my career. And to think that, you know, 35% of healthcare organizations are now talking about shifting workflows outside of the EHR to deliver a better, better, better digital experience really means that we are changing the landscape, right? Um, the innovation is going to move us away from sort of our traditional model, um, both of care and of how we as IT leaders really support that care through the EMR, which has always been the center of our universe, um, which really leads us to an even greater ch challenge in data than we've already had. Right? It's already difficult to be interoperable. It's already difficult to get that information into the right place. But now we have to innovate on top of that and really achieve some of these goals that we've set out as an industry just to stay relevant. So uh, we think that the ability to, to achieve that is really dependent on capturing and analyzing data from different sources. Right? Imagine a, a patient triage line, you have to be able to take in information both about your health system and about what that patient needs and be able to use it effectively. We have to understand an individual's unique health needs. And really, we have to modernize our technology infrastructure underneath that to support these next gen cases, use cases. Um, this isn't something that we would say traditionally is something as healthcare leaders, we can just turn and deliver on our existing technology platforms. These are new generation problems. Um, and yet, it's still this constant struggle to manage the data, right? Even before we take on this innovation process, um, the healthcare industry has struggled to understand its data, to manage its data effectively. Um, I think my favorite story in general um, that really provides this picture is to think about the COVID pandemic, right? Uh, the New York Times talked quite a bit about how the fax machine was the primary data source for information related to the situation with COVID in 2020, right? We, we were exchanging information basically in fax and then taking it and manually entering it into spreadsheets. And part of the reason for that um, is there really are breakdowns in data capture. Uh, some of it's that we're not fully capturing it. I don't know that that's true as often anymore. We're really good about using our EMRs, but data gets stuck in electronic silos. Um, I think in particular, uh, it's often trapped in paper or maybe it's trapped between systems, whether you're on Cerner or Epic, being able to exchange that information. Obviously the Cures Act is trying to resolve that problem, but it's still uh, sitting in those places where we're not able to move it effectively and tell a patient's story effectively. And that data is really incomplete. It's not actionable at its core. Um, I sat in a really interesting focus group. I had the chance to lead a focus group with a number of CIOs uh, two weeks ago, where we, we had a discussion about EMRs and what we were expecting to get out of them and maybe what expectations had and hadn't been met. And, one of the biggest stories I heard in that is that we still have so much data, um, but it's really not actionable information. And I think an even better sort of story to tell there is as a healthcare entity, as, as healthcare as a whole, we produce uh, well over 2000 exabytes of data a year, not petabytes, not terabytes, not gigabytes, exabytes of data, a massive amount of information, and we only use 3% of it on average. Certainly, if you're a provider in the audience today, that's a little bit terrible to hear, knowing how much information you're entering about your patients, but that shows you very clearly that managing the data and telling a story out of the data is still something we are not achieving um, despite all of our advancements. So in order to do that, to tell that story, to take on these next-gen use cases, we would argue that um, we think there's four things that are really important to healthcare systems that can make a difference. And this is where digital transformation comes in to drive that innovation, right, and that data innovation. Um, so when we look at the four activities we want to kind of take on, um, the first is really focusing on that data capture and retrieval factor. And we're gonna talk about how 
we think that can be achieved. We've seen it achieved and some stories about health systems who broken down those barriers and really driven data capture to the next level to, to eliminate those electronic silos we spoke about. You can't necessarily change how all the information comes in, but you can certainly change how you capture it and what you do with it. Um, secondly, we think tuning up investments in data analytics. You saw it on my last slide and I didn't quite hit on it, but 64% of healthcare organizations don't have a strong analytics function. We have all this information and all this data, but a good portion of health systems don't have anyone telling them what to do with it or what it means or what action should be taken off of it. Um, so that's a pretty easy step for, for driving uh, innovation here. A uh, third, we're gonna make the move to a cloud-based data security and management platform. And Sadish is really an expert in this cloud space. It's gonna talk extensively about why the cloud matters, right? A, a lot of, um, there's a lot of options in healthcare for infrastructure, absolutely understand and support on-prem infrastructure and there are use cases there. But when we talk about data, data really um, is most effectively addressed and utilized when we're able to take advantage of cloud services um, and public cloud services in particular. And then third, fourth, um, we're gonna hone in on that data-based innovation, right? So we've taken all these steps, now we can really innovate on that data and use the information to drive digital innovation uh, through this digital transformation process. So let's look at these, these key actions we can take here. So I mentioned strengthening data capture. Um, I think for the first time in Probably my experience, you know, we've been talking about artificial intelligence and natural language processing and machine learning. And my colleague, um, Joe Grinstead, gave a great presentation a few weeks ago on all of these things and what they mean and where they've come to. And we really finally reached the point in, in the technology where these tools, when applied correctly, can actually make the difference to take and extract that key information from these what I would call digitized paper, right? It's in PDF, it's a scanned document, it's narrative text, and we need to get it into a discrete format. So the process to strengthen that data capture is actually um, achievable, I think, for the first time. It's easy to move information out of the fax format, out of those PDFs, and into discrete information using tools um, such as Amazon, um, as well as, as Google, those um, technologies are bringing us this future, right? And so um, from there, we're able to move forward and really uh, provide a picture with all of the data. We certainly can't change as healthcare entities what say my neighboring health system is using for their EMR. We can't change whether or not they're gonna fax that information when we make a request for outside records. What we can do is set up our internal systems to take in that information, use the new technologies, and um, make that data actionable and, and really usable by strengthening that data capture function. Um, secondly, we really, and I mentioned it before, 64% of healthcare leaders don't have a strong data analytics function, and 6 in 10 are struggling with incomplete data. So let's address the incomplete data with the data capture. And then let's start and address um, investments in data analytics. As, uh, an, organ as an industry that produces those 2,000 exabytes of data, it's a clear priority to build platforms that allow us to utilize that information, as well as uh, resources and structures that allow us to gain key insights and information. Um, Another key factor that came out of the focus group with the CIOs that I mentioned earlier was that um, there's still no story being told in healthcare. There's still no um, clear picture of what the patient's uh, really journey has been in their healthcare experience. And that's what providers really need to tell, to drive outcomes, right? With that patient, to understand where that patient has been and where they need to go and what care is appropriate. This investment in data analytics will help shift that, right, in providing a platform and the infrastructure, first and foremost, which Sadish is going to talk about, and then really the resourcing associated with those uh, data analytics functions inside the organization. So with that, Sadish, I'll hand it over to you to speak about the cloud. 
Sure. Uh, thanks, Ashley, and uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Sudish Mowgli. I'm the CTO for Healthcare Triangle. So in continuation to what uh, Ashley has been talking about in terms of digital tra transformation, uh, in order for that to be successful and also be agile, it is critical to have an elastic and secure platform that support, uh, supports a pay-as-you-go model. And uh, public cloud is actually becoming the platform of choice for data analytics and digital transformation for healthcare organizations. And according to Gartner, uh, end user spending on the public cloud is uh, growing by 18% to about $300 billion. And one of the main contributing factors is, uh, or two of the contributing factors to that is organizations are looking to strengthen their business continuity and uh, also are embarking on digital transformations efforts. Uh, and they're, they're doing that by eliminating on-premise data centers and backup facilities. When the pandemic hit, healthcare IT faced an immediate challenge on how to protect business continuity across platforms, especially during a time when ransomware attacks were increasing. So there is an example of at Fort Madison Community Hospital in Southeast Iowa, IT leaders there implemented a public cloud-based backup and disaster recovery solution for its EHR in March of 2021, as they bolstered their cybersecurity defense. The impact is a, was that it was a highly flexible and a highly scalable and more reliable solution for disaster recovery with improved uh, recovery time and a 30% savings over private cloud solutions. A lot of organizations are actually very concerned about security when it comes to the public cloud. But uh, in our experience, those who have taken the leap are learning that the cloud, if implemented correctly, uh, can be more secure. And the reason for that is because of the advanced security controls being offered by these service providers. Uh, and also the fact that some of the leading world's leading security experts work at these firms. And to be successful, organizations must embrace the automation. But in order to be successful in the cloud, it is very critical that organizations must embrace the automation and API capabilities that are available, and also must create a cloud center of excellence and staff it with the appropriate skills. 64% of digital transformation uh, uh, initiatives fail because of the lack of the right IT skills and treating the cloud as, a, as an extension of their data centers. Next slide, please. So what, uh, what we have been seeing uh, in our experience with our customers is that by making the move to the cloud, uh, organizations are building uh, for the future. And uh, in, by doing so, they are getting, gaining access to a lot of advanced capabilities very rapidly. Uh, they're able to build out solutions that utilize the state of the art in technology uh, and to be able to transform digitally. Uh, and uh, you know, some examples of that is uh, the uh, machine learning and AI capabilities, as well as the NLP capabilities uh, that are readily available, uh, 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 able to implement advanced imaging analysis, be able to process genomics data, elastic uh, data storage, um, IoT for digital health, and advanced data analytics. And uh, by making use of these capabilities, uh, healthcare organizations are able to study the transmission of disease, uh, you know, uh, implement personalized healthcare, forecast demand for uh, healthcare services, identify populations at risk, a number that has increased substantially during the pandemic, and correlate causes of diseases to external factors such as proximity, uh, environment, and location. Next slide, please. So due to the pandemic, uh, organizations face a new urgency to manage and uh, report on data in a timely and accurate manner. So this was something that uh, was required by a lot of organizations, healthcare organizations. And more than half of the healthcare and life sciences organizations uh, at the moment uh, manage data as a critical business asset. And investment in data-driven decision-making continues to gain a lot of momentum. So as healthcare organizations seek opportunities to advance data-fueled uh, innovation, there are two things that to take into account. One is explore data analytics in the cloud. And second thing is being, and being able to provide the ability to connect disparate sort of data sources for powerful insights. Uh, by 2022, Gartner estimates that, uh, or predicts that 90% of data analytics and innovation will occur in the public cloud. In healthcare, cloud-based data analytics has increased access to advanced analytics services supercharging an organization's ability to ingest, process, and gain insights from their data. 
critical to achieving true digital transformation. During the pandemic, we have seen cloud-based data analytics revamp the way in which COVID-19 was identified and treated, improving outcomes for patients and avoiding preventable deaths. This was actually done by ingesting data from disparate sources, various different sources, bringing the data and correlating that um, by ingesting both structured and unstructured data, combining clinical and commercial uh, data, and processing real-time and real -time and batch data. So healthcare organizations are applying these approaches to understanding chronic disease and other uh, conditions as well. They're, so they're taking the approach that uh, they had to do uh, for, uh, for COVID-19, uh, and uh, they're now expanding on that uh, for chronic uh, diseases and other conditions. The goal obviously is to understand as much as possible about a patient through analysis of real world data during the earliest stages of diseases when the treatment is simpler and less expensive. I'm gonna hand it back to Ashley to go over one of the three uh, case studies that we have to share with you. Thank you, Sudesh. <clears throat> So we want to highlight three stories um, inside the healthcare industry related to this digital transformation to drive digital innovation. And the key steps that we've highlighted to you today, we want to talk about how some of these organizations have taken those steps and the successes and or you know, challenges that they've seen in that process. Um, our first example is a mid-sized health system based out of South Dakota. And one of the reasons we want to start with this story is that this healthcare organization, they're not Mayo Clinic, they're not the providence of the world, they're really a, a medium-sized community organization serving their local um, health, uh, their local patients with five hospitals and 38 clinics, so medium-sized all the way across the board. Um, and they were really able to take on some of these challenges that we've mentioned today and, and really succeed, right? So this isn't something that requires a significant amount of resourcing or you know, really the big um, money and, and investment that you see in places like Mayo or Johns Hopkins. Um, the key thing to understand, particularly about this health system, is because they are in South Dakota, they're located um, in a fairly rural area with a number of different community health systems that surround them. Um, everything from Indian health services to your local mom and pop pharmacy um, to small independent providers who continue to provide care out in the community. So one of the things they took on in terms of a challenge for them was they were consistently receiving data from multiple sources in myriad of formats. Um, they weren't able to exchange information electronically with a lot of these entities. And so they actually ingested thousands upon thousands of, date, of pages of information daily, which were manually identified, manually scanned in, and then manually pushed into the EHR through um, their scanning system on base. And then really they would sit in, in the EMR on, if any of you are familiar with Epic, what's called the media tab, which is kind of this lovely place off to the side where nobody really looks and no one's really gonna find or use that information. So not only were they going through this very manual set of, of steps to get the information into the EMR, which took quite a bit of time um, and was frequently delayed or behind schedule. But in addition to that information as presented, wasn't necessarily useful to the provider. It was hidden off to the side, it wasn't discreet, and wasn't able to flow into the Epic system to um, feed things like um, labs over time or lab results over time, for example, if it was a lab result, or you know, medication refills and, and go through the workflow within the EMR because it was a piece of paper that was being scanned in as an order. So they really needed something to drive digital innovation in this situation um, and needed an advanced automation solution to, to achieve data capture, to take the data and make it useful. Um, and they took on a solution that really um, drove uh, the utilization of cloud-based AI and machine learning. Um, the process that they looked at was to say, what what, what is our problem, right? We have this clear issue with information coming in from outside locations with this information. This is our challenge. What, what exists out in the marketplace that would allow us to meet that challenge quickly and effectively? 
And the answer was uh, the public cloud and some actually at the time really beta products uh, that were out on the cloud, but were quickly innovating and moving forward. And by using those tools um, in less than about six months, they were able to stand up the platform and achieve uh, the automation of the process of categorizing data from these unstructured reports. Um, using those solutions and training those models with machine learning, natural language processing, and artificial intelligence, they were able to recognize and extract information from those documents, faxes, and narrative reports. They could identify the patient, the type of document, and the key information from the document and pair that uh, with the right patient record and then increase the speed at which that data was made available to the providers. Um, as a result, they streamlined that um, patient care through the faster processing. They actually reduced labor savings quite a bit um, and able to repurpose staff to higher value activities. Again, humans as a rule on rote repetitive work don't do really well. It's a great place to use this type of, of technology solution because uh, a human is going to make say 10 to 30 errors out of every 100 in a repetitive task versus a machine can be trained and those humans can be really pushed into higher value activity that really generates more value for the health system, um, which is where they were able to do here. Um, they also saw higher levels of accuracy and increased scalability through the public cloud. They started this off with a very small portion of their health system using just a single clinic that was receiving all these facts moving all the way up to taking all the faxes that came in inbound from any location uh, throughout their health system, which is to the tune of almost 100,000 uh, documents a month. Page-wise, that could be 400 to 700,000 pages that were being processed on a monthly basis. Um, and so from that perspective, they really you know, took the challenge of data capture. Uh, they went out and looked at the tools available uh, took on the public cloud for a more secure solution for the patient information, and then use this advanced sort of information and data capture data retrieval tools through AI, machine learning, natural language processing available to them to solve this challenge of unusable data. Uh, now that information is made available and usable in their EMR, and they're able to uh, take action and provide their um, patients with a better experience. So with that finish, I'm going to hand it over to you to talk about our next two case studies. Sure. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so one of the three case studies uh, here is uh, of a senior care organization uh, headquartered out of uh, North Carolina. And uh, they were providing um, uh, uh, ability for seniors, senior clients to continue to uh, live at home. And uh, they were employing uh, remote monitoring to uh, help seniors to continue to stay at home. And uh, the providers or uh, you know, uh, the physicians as well as nurse care uh, practitioners have, uh, are given the ability to monitor and assess health status before it turns into an emergency. And uh, it, it, was, it is a unique service offering that employs uh, biometric sensors, daily activity sensors, fall sensors, et cetera, to remotely monitor the health of the clients. Next slide, please. So the challenge here was that the provider of the uh, service required an intuitive uh, portal to ingest data from disparate sensors and devices from, uh, from the client's homes. Uh, they required a mobile app that can be used by the caregivers, physicians, and nurse practitioners to monitor and communicate securely with the client. Um, Alexa integration for easy to use interface and, or an audio interface to query for the client's health. Uh, and uh, data collection over a period of time, which would uh, build a baseline, which then can be leveraged by ML and AI algorithms to detect onset of illness before symptoms manifest. Next slide, please. So the solution that was implemented was a, uh, a cloud-based data lake, uh, lake that uh, had the capability to ingest in real time all the sensor and device data from each of the senior uh, clients' homes. Uh, and it, it, it was built to a scale of, at, at the time, or currently it's about 100 to, it's about 200,000 clients uh, receiving a data. And um, there was a, da there's a da dashboard that uh, essentially uh, you know, displays all the data of each individual patient or each individual client. 
And uh, there's a mobile app that uh, alerts based on uh, thresholds that are set. And uh, because of all the data that is being ingested into the data lake, uh, there is both historical as well as current data. And AI and ML algorithms are being uh, utilized to try to uh, build out a baseline and uh, try to identify outliers or anomalous uh, data to detect uh, onset of illness uh, prior to symptoms actually manifesting. Next slide, please. So the Im impact was that uh, the clients had the capability of uh, being continuously monit monitored by caregivers and practitioners. Uh, there was uh, the ability to detect uh, illness uh, early, uh, a faster response time, and uh, the and the clients had the cap uh, ability to live where they were very comfortable. Next, uh, next uh, case study, please, Ashley. Next slide. Um, so this is the third uh, case study. Uh, in in this case, it was a large uh, scale healthcare and biopharma organizations and uh, organization and, and they had um, a large amount of data uh, uh, and as well as large amount of research data and uh, personal health information. And uh, they required uh, a large scale data analytics platform. And uh, they had actually moved to the cloud, uh, but they, were, they failed to achieve the effective digital innovation and ag agility. Next slide, please. And the challenge was uh, uh, the challenge was uh, I mean the uh, need for a very large uh, elastic data platform, uh, uh, but the reason for them uh, to fail the first time around was because they were treating the cloud. Uh, they did move to the cloud. And they took their data there, but the uh, problem was that they were treating the cloud as an extension to their data center and also brought in a lot of the technologies that they were using in their data centers over to the cloud and uh, were failed to uh, leverage the advanced uh, cloud capabilities such as elastic storage, uh, the serverless and container compute, as well as advanced data analytics. Next slide. And so the solution was that uh, uh, to, the solution there was that we adjusted the cloud approach to consider infrastructure as code and uh, and utilize a lot of automation uh, also starting to uh, also uh, leveraging uh, the advanced cloud capabilities uh, both the elastic storage as well as the uh, compute uh, the flexible compute capabilities in the cloud not only did that actually uh, give them access to uh, accelerated uh, analytics capabilities as well as it also actually brought their cost down uh, we also implemented an agile methodology with continuous integration and continuous delivery to keep their data platform up to date by incorporating the latest cloud services and then also enabled a user friendly uh, advanced uh, big data analytics capabilities for them to be able to do the uh, do the analytics on on the on the large scale of data that they had actually ingested into the platform uh, now not only was it the scale of data that they were ingesting, it was also the different kinds of data, uh, disparate data that they were ingesting, both in, in data from EHR, data from social media, imaging data, uh, as well as um, uh, yeah, audio, uh, audio and video data. Next slide, please. So the impact was that it clearly uh, sped up the delivery of uh, new drugs and research results for them. Uh, it, they were also able to measure the effectiveness of their drugs, drugs using real-world evidence by ingesting data from social media, uh, anonymized electronic health records, uh, and other data sources. Uh, there was a uh, reduction, 30% reduction in uh, operational cost. And, uh, and, um, and what they got through the platform was a continuously up-to-date and secure digital transformation platform to handle uh, patient data. That uh, let me hand this hand it back to you, Ashley. Thank you, Sadesh. Really through these three case studies, you can see that um, digital transformation can make a substantial difference in achieving digital innovation. And these four areas um, we talked about with the first example, strengthening data capture and retrieval, as well as moving to cloud-based um, platforms to provide those services, which can drive some database innovation. 
Their second, we talked about tuning up that investment in data analytics, as well as taking in disparate data sources onto the cloud platform and driving innovation through um, anomaly monitoring and notification, as well as um, patient care provisioning based on the data that was flowing through the system. And then finally, really seeing a, an organization um, that attempted these steps, but really um, wasn't able to achieve them effectively without rethinking their approach a bit on how to effectively move to the cloud and take on these four uh, steps to meet their needs and really uh, create a data platform that allowed for the type of research they need to provide. Um, so overall, we want to kind of leave you with these messages uh, coming out of our conversation today, and then we'll open it up for questions from the group. We'd love to hear your thoughts and um, experiences that you're having in this space, as well as maybe uh, stories you yourself have, have gone through as you move towards digital transformation to achieve digital innovation. Uh, first and foremost, at the end of the day, digital innovation is happening. We have to respond as a healthcare industry and take on the challenge. Um, avoiding the challenge isn't going to, um, unfortunately, do much because the industry is changing so quickly, uh, both in response to the pandemic and now in response to what patients expect based on what we saw in the pandemic, uh, from everything from telehealth to patient triage through chatbots all the way through what is a very popular conversation around digital front door. Um, and in addition to that, without the data, um, we're not able to make the next steps and really take things forward. So we've got to, you know, if we're gonna do digital innovation, we have to be thinking about these things. So leads us to kind of our second approach. Leaders should really develop a strategic approach to achieve transformation to support the innovation. Um, we've given you four key areas we think are critical to that. Uh, steps uh, along the pathway. And obviously everyone's pathway is a little different. Taking off a bite-sized piece, uh, not trying to boil the ocean is important here, which is our fourth point. It's really not as complex, I think, at its core as it seems. This, these are big, new, confusing technologies that many of us aren't familiar with and haven't worked with in the past. However, the three case studies that we shared with you today, uh, each of them occurred and looked at the challenge and met the challenge in less than six months. And I think um, as healthcare providers, we're often afraid to make those changes or we're, we're challenged by the impacts of making those changes. Um, we encourage you to, um, in, as our fourth bullet, take the first step, find a problem within your organization and take a look at how these digital transformation strategies of um, improving data capture and retrieval, tuning up your investments in data analytics, uh, moving and looking at public cloud solutions to enhance security, as well as give you a scalable platform can drive you into a database innovation approach. And with that, we will uh, open it up for questions. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions today, um, please feel free to go ahead and put those in the Q&A so that um, both Ashley and Sadish could answer those for you. And um, while we're waiting, I just also want to remind everyone that there'll be an exit survey today, so you could give us some feedback on the presentation today. Um, that's always quite helpful for us for planning these sessions. And we want to thank both Ashley and Sadish for taking the time out to present to our New England HIMSS chapter. Um, the CP HIMSS credit will be sent via email to all the registered attendees for today. So just waiting to see if there's any questions um, for you guys. I do want to thank you for joining us today and um, thank you to Healthcare Triangle and um, Mike for coordinating our session today. And um, I guess I'll give everyone a little bit more time back in their day. Thanks, Ashley and Sadish, and um, have a great afternoon. We appreciate your time today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.